Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast today. Cleveland State University's Diversity Management Program is designed for business community and organizational leaders wanting to influence change. Program Director Lisa Gainier and alumnus Marlon Moore will share more of, about that with us. Then Nicole Bell of the President's Council Foundation and Cinnamon Pelly of J.P. Morgan Chase will explain how both organizations have come together to help local students. Later on the broadcast after that, Dr. Rachel Talton of Synergy Marketing Strategy and Research will talk about a series of forums she is spearheading, focusing on economic inclusion, including everybody in our region. That's good to know. Good morning again. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope, and we're beginning with two good people here. Lisa Gainier, who's Director of Diversity Management at uh, Cleveland State University. Good morning. And Marlon Moore, who's an alumnus of Diversity Management Program at Cleveland good State University. Good to have you both with us. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having yeah. us. Lisa, let's begin with you. What is the Diversity Management pro Program offered at Cleveland State? What, what do you teach? It? What do we teach? We teach leadership. We teach culturally competent leadership, and we teach change leadership. Mm -hmm. And we are very much about uh, economic inclusion in this in this uh, greater Cleveland and beyond region. So mm -hmm. we are trying to help people become culturally competent leaders who can lead the change in their organizations. By economic inclusion, we're talking about including in everybody. Including everyone, mm -hmm. making opportunities yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah. And that's the goal of the diversity right. management right. program. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marlon Moore here is one of your graduates getting a master's master's degree in that. Congratulations on that. When was that, Marlon? Thank you. It was in 2005 uh -huh. that I received my, my master's from DMP. And because of that, you've been able to go up the ladder a little bit. I've had some pretty good success in the yeah. corporate world. It was a great experience being in the diversity management program, built some very solid relationships, uh, both personally and professionally, and that's really catapulted me in my career. I'm currently the vice president of supplier diversity at Key Bank, mm -hmm. so it's been a great experience, and I uh, enjoyed every moment of it. So you've learned a great deal going along through this program. Absolutely. Learned a lot about cultural competence, um, how to influence change within the organizational setting, so those skills that they helped me develop has really served me well. Lisa Gainier, he's in the banking business. Yep. People go in other businesses mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. as a result. Give yeah. us a, a, a thumbnail sketch of, of yeah. what somebody could do with a master's degree in diversity management? Well, you can, I think the wonderful thing about our program is that you can do, you can apply what you learn in our program to a number of, of uh, careers and industries. And it really is, a, it depends on what you're in and how you want to apply the leadership skills that you've developed. So you can be in nonprofit world, you can be in the corporate world, you can be in governance. Mm -hmm. Any one of those areas requires culturally competent skills. Yeah. Now yeah. this is at the master's Level. This is at the master's level. So we need level, a bachelor's right. degree walking a, in the door. Exactly, right. And you need to know how to write, right? <laughs> Absolutely. There's a great deal of writing <laughs> yes. which goes on. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it really forces you to think critically mm -hmm. and really uh, work on your problem solving skills. And the writing really enhances the overall experience. Great professors, uh, great, great experience. I tell young yeah. people out there all the time, yeah. especially those in elementary yeah. and junior yeah. high, yeah. middle school and high school, write, write, write. Yeah. You're going to need to write no matter what right. you do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Who's the best candidate for this program now? Um, I believe that the best candidates are folks who have had some experience already in the workplace and have begun to, to um, uh, experience the challenges of leadership and experience the challenges of influencing people. So you bring to the program a level of experience which then makes our programming all the more real for you because you're now learning how to actually apply what has, I think, can be very theoretical into real world experience. So you can take it right back into your workplace and use what you've learned on our weekend, in our weekend class, turn around the very next Monday and be using and applying that, that learning in your, in your work environment. This program is ongoing at Cleveland State University. We're talking about the diversity management program. Marlon Moore is an alumnus of that program. How long were you in this program working towards your master's degree? The program was about 21 months. Mm -hmm. Great experience. From that, I've recently started a PhD program in organizational leadership. Mm -hmm. So the diversity management program at Cleveland State really helped set the foundation. We talked about the writing. That's 
does yeah. come in handy uh, at this next stage. So yeah. it was a great experience and um, very well spent, time so, well spent. Yeah. So if all goes as planned, when, when, you, when you come back, we'll hang the doctorate on you. Absolutely. The PhD Ab title. Ab absolutely. Right. That's your goal, right, isn't it? Right, to, to absolutely. To get people thinking education. Education and, again, to be able to compete in the global economy. So not all of us are going to be PhD candidates, but we do need to be able to function in a global economy. So, you know, you may actually work abroad, you may just stay in Northeast Ohio. Either way, you're going to need to understand how to work with different people from all over the globe. Uh, the phone number to call is 216-687-2587, as you see at the bottom of the screen. That's 687-2587. Or you can go to csuohio.edu. That'll get you into the Cleveland State University uh, uh, a website. This increased your marketability most assuredly. Absolutely. I think the, the thing that I really gained from this experience was being able to work with leadership on a corporate level. It's been a wonderful opportunity for me to rub elbows with a lot of the executives really across the city of Northeast Ohio. I attribute a lot of that to my experience at the diversity management program. We hear great things about Cleveland State University. We see Cleveland State University yes. is really expanding its footprint yes, in indeed. downtown mm -hmm, Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Look into your crystal ball. What do you see on the future, on the horizon for the next 20 years or so? Next 20 years for Cleveland State or for, yeah. for, CS, Cleveland, for, Cleveland, State for Cleveland, Cleveland in general? Well, Cleveland State University. Well, I, I see us continuing to develop our level of engagement with the community. You know, we're, we're doing the Neo um, UMED thing now. Um, I think our program is going to help with, with medical education. We are doing research on stereotype threat in healthcare interactions. And so I think there are a lot of things that, that Cleveland State is going to be able to do for the larger community and helping the Cleveland, the greater Cleveland area, grow and expand and develop. And along the way we will turn out more master's, master's degree master's degrees. people like Marla and more. Absolutely. Okay, congratulations, Marlon Thank you very Moore. Much. And tell everybody at Key Bank where you are the vice president for supply diversity. Absolutely. Tell them all we said hello over sure at Key thing. Bank. And tell everybody at Cleveland State we said hi. Thank you very much. We'll do. Lisa Gainier is director of the diversity management program at Cleveland State University, and Marlon Moore is an alumnus of the diversity management program at Cleveland State University, having received his master's degree a few years ago. Good to have you both on the broadcast. Good to see you again. Thank you uh, so much. 687 2587 is the 216 area. Code phone number for Cleveland State. I'm taking a break. Back in a moment. Good to have you with us on Kaleidoscope today. The President's Council Foundation and J.P. Morgan Chase have formed a partnership to help 10th, 11th, and 12th graders excel. Executive Director of the President's Council Foundation, Nicole Bell, is with us, and the Vice President of Global Philanthropy at J.P. Morgan Chase, Cinnamon Pelly, is with us as well. Cinnamon sitting on the outside, and Nicole sitting right next to me. Good to have you both here. Tell me about the mission of the President's Council Foundation. Sure. We are focused on research and entrepreneurial education in Northeast Ohio's black community here in Cleveland primarily. So we've been doing this since 2000 and we're really looking to um, help with the economic development of our region. We have two programs. One's called Emerging Entrepreneurs that helps up and coming um, African American entrepreneurs. The other is our PC Scholars Program which is where we're partnering with J.P. Morgan Chase. And you're working with 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. We are. Yeah. We are. Um, right from the Cleveland School District yeah. and we're focused on four key areas. It's academic achievement, career preparedness, leadership, and life skills. Um, so every session they meet with us about twice a month, and every session is going to be based on one of those topics. Okay. Sunman Pella, you're Vice President for Global Philanthropy at J.P. Morgan Chase. Why did J.P. Morgan Chase decide to get involved in this program with the President's Council Foundation? Uh, this is actually our second um, investment in the program. We actually were one of the founding sponsors in 2008, and it was just a dynamic program that really focused on our students to help them be um, to stay in the school to graduate and to make sure that when they graduate they're college and career ready whatever they choose to do they have the skill sets to be able to pursue their dreams what kind of skills are we talking about what what, what are we pushing what are, what are we trying to prepare them to be better at if I can hang that out like that sure and and so and and I'll let Nicole jump in as well um, but some of the skill sets include both the hard skill sets you get in school how to read how to write but then also the soft skill sets about your attitude how to how to dress, customer service, how do you conduct yourself in a workplace. So these are some of the skills that, the, that our students learn by participating in this program. Nicole, what of the 
10th, 11th, and 12th graders, how have they responded to all of this now? Wonderfully. I, I will give them credit because it's Saturday morning sessions. Yeah. So they're getting up early on a Saturday morning, coming down to Tri-C Metro Campus is where we hold all of our mm -hmm. sessions. And they're actively engaged. I, I think of when I was probably 16. I don't know if I was getting up early on a Saturday morning going to a session to learn about things. Um, so they respond wonderfully. And the great part about it is we have 100% graduation rate. So all of our kids are graduating high school. Uh -huh. And they're all entering a two-year or four-year college or university in Ohio, which is great because we're keeping them here, the too. The fact that they show up at, ten, at, at in, uh, whatever time it was, you said nine, morning, nine. A, nine o'clock yeah. on a Saturday morning. The fact they show up right. says something right it there. Really does. They want this, mm -hmm. don't they? Yes. Speak to that yeah. a little bit. And our, our students are, are ready. I think they're looking for more positive engagement and direction from the adults and, and family members in their life. And I think what we'll find is as we uh, volunteer and mentor and get involved in our youth lives, they rise to the occasion. So you're right, to get up that early right. on a Saturday over, you know, two or three years is really quite a commitment and I think just demonstrates the character of our young people. So there's some 10th and 11th and 12th graders out there watching us right now. Mm -hmm. Certainly there's some moms and dads out there so. saying, now wait a minute, now how can I get my kid in this? <laughs> right. Right. So right. how do they get their kid in this? There's a couple different ways. Um, obviously you can go to our website, www.presidentscouncil.org, and that will have an application and more information about the program. Mm -hmm. But the guidance counselors in the schools are really our best resource for finding students. Um, they identify some students who are 10th graders. They have a 2.5 to 3.0 GP range, GPA range. If they're a little above or a little below that, that's okay. You want them to come in having some skills. We do, but we also want them to ha be eager to learn and really want to be involved in the community as well. Yeah, let me put a phone number on the screen for right. more information. People can call this phone number, can Absolutely. they, and get information? Absolutely. Uh, it's a 216-771-8702, as you see at the bottom of the screen. Is it 8702 or 8703? 8702. 8702. We'll ask the uh, control room to make a, make a change on that. 8702 is the number. 771-8702. Uh, disregard that last number you saw. And uh, people can get more information. Yes. This inspires you as well, doesn't it, Cinnamon Absolutely. Pelley? Absolutely. In your job at J.P. Morgan Chase. Mm -hmm. Supporting the President's Council in this way helps us in a variety of ways. In their most basic way, in strengthening Cleveland, when we focus on our our students, we slow down the brain drain, we, we increase the likelihood that they'll continue to work and, and raise their families here. But then it also makes great sense for us as an employer. We need skilled, talented people to help us continue to do business. And by investing in our young people, we're creating a great pipeline of, of doing just that. And we are inspiring the I would imagine there's probably as much inspiration as there uh, is counseling Absolutely. on the subjects, maybe more about inspiration. Yes. looking into the future. Yes, we do a lot of goal setting and career planning with the kids and each student is paired up with a one-on-one -on -one mentor as well. So they have that one-on-one yeah. one -on -one mentoring component too. And this is down at Tri-C Metro is. Campus? It is. Downtown Cleveland? Yep. Saturday mornings? Saturday mornings, bright but, and early. But if you invest in a Saturday morning, you are really it's investing in the rest yeah, you get of a lot. your life. You get a lot out of it. That is my belief, but it's all about what you guys are doing now. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. We'll put that number on the screen. Once again, as you see, correct it. It is 216-771-8702. 216-771-8702. As you see at the bottom of the screen, there's a website also you can go to. Nicole Bell, Executive Director of the President's Council Foundation, and Cinnamon Pelly, Vice President for Global Philanthropy. Philanthropy for J.P. Morgan Chase. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for Thank you. Us. You are saving your children, and we are appreciative. Thanks. You're welcome. I'll take a break. This is Kaleidoscope. Back in a moment with the CEO of a local company doing good things after this. Good to have you back with Kaleidoscope today. We've got a good broadcast, I think so. CEO of Synergy Marketing Strategy and Research, Dr. Rachel Talton, has hosted several forums over the past year focused on economic inclusion for minority and women-owned businesses. And Dr. Talton will talk more this morning about the initiative and the potential impact on our region. Good to have you with us, Rachel Talton. Thank you yeah. so much. What was the inspiration for the Northeast Ohio Economic Inclusion Forum? Oh, I love to talk about the inspiration. It actually occurred on a trip to Tokyo. Ooh. So uh, we were hired by the state of Ohio Department of Transportation mm -hmm. to help them uh, attract more disadvantaged businesses, yeah. mm -hmm. minority and, and women-owned businesses. And on the way to Tokyo, I thought to myself, we can help them with this 
this particular issue, help them get to 15% on, on this particular project, or we can ask the bigger question, how do we solve sort of some of the issues around economic inclusion in our region. And inclusion, we mean including everybody. We mean including bringing in minorities and, and women. And women and historically disadvantaged groups and, mm -hmm. and, and small business of every ilk who haven't mm -hmm. generally mm -hmm. historically had access to opportunities. Yeah, yeah. And that's what Synergy Marketing Strategy and Research puts a lot of emphasis on that kind of thing. Absolutely. We've actually, our core business is marketing research and strategy. So mm -hmm. we're very, very focused on customer loyalty mm -hmm. and how to build, how to attract customers yeah. um, uh, to a particular brand yeah. or market. Who are the participants in these forums that, that you have? Uh, we've had uh, tremendous participation from across the region. Mm -hmm. So we've had uh, nonprofit sector leaders, uh, everyone from Sandy Pianalto to, uh, to Bob Eckert of the Cleveland Foundation. We've had uh, public sector leaders, uh, 400 in total, yeah. uh, including Senator Sherrod Brown, and Senator Rob Portman. The governors had uh, uh, participants there in addition to the, the Cleveland mayor, 21 other mayors across mm -hmm. the, the region, and the county executive. Uh, we've had private sector leaders, Chris Connor uh, and so many other, Warren Anderson uh, participated, folks from the Cleveland Indians, uh, from Rock yeah. Ventures, um, and, and uh, as I mentioned, 400 uh, purchasers who control billions of dollars in in spend they purchase billions of dollars uh, in in uh, assets and so what we want to do is find a way to ensure that women minorities and as you said including everyone have access to those opportunities is, is there a plan for another forum coming up yes when, is that going? Uh, yes. when, do, you, when do you see that we see that occurring on june 8th uh -huh. very excited about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. uh, june 8th at the marriott at key center uh, we will be rolling out so this has been a year of, of, of really having these conversations across these sectors mm -hmm. and so uh so on june 8th we we roll out three programs that are so exciting and we'll be covering them over the next 12 months and yeah. we know that you will be involved in covering them as well. Oh, we're all we're involved in covering you, everything uh, that's good in Cleveland. Absolutely. We try to be. Absolutely. But, but this is about not about us, it's about you. Uh, uh, what, what's going to happen here? What, what's your overall philosophy when we talk about inclusion? Now, that, 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 that's a 50 cent word. That's a dollar 50 cent word. Indeed. What's inclusion philosophically mean? Yes, indeed. And, and, uh, and I'll answer the question philosophically, and then I'll answer it with regard to this specific uh, economic inclusion forum series. I think, as you mentioned, you, you, you shared a great story with me when we were off the set. You talked about we're all alloys. We're here together to, to, to be additive to each other. So really, to me, inclusion makes, means making sure that we are all a part of the process and that we all have equal opportunities to share and thrive, right? Yeah. So philosophically, I think that's what it means. With regard to the Northeast Ohio Economic Inclusion Forum series, we're very, very specifically focused on purchasing opportunities. So how do we connect the 150,000 women and minorities who own their own businesses in Northeast Ohio to the billions of dollars in in uh, purchasing opportunities that exist. And so we're very, very focused on that narrow slice of inclusion that says, how do we develop economically in our region by supporting these businesses? So you're inviting people to come to this June 8th forum? So, at yeah. Marriott Key Center. The forum is actually invitation only, but mm -hmm. if, if, if individuals who are women and minority-owned businesses are mm -hmm. interested in attending, please call us. We'll make sure that, that we get you access to this event. There will be public, private, and nonprofit sector executives uh, on hand as well. Can they call that 431 431-0008. 0008 in the 216 area code and yes. you can get more information. This excites you, this kind. Of, I can see the gleam in your eye. This kind of, this I'm so passionate about it and you said, well, does Synergy do this? And, yeah. and frankly, we're, you know, we work mostly with the private sector mm -hmm. doing consumer research and consumer strategy. Um, but this is something that does. I'm, I'm so passionate about it. I feel that it's, it's a mission. It's important. Um, I talk to small business owners of every ilk, mm -hmm. and they're excited about uh, the opportunities, and, and I am. I'm very passionate about it. Well, I'm glad to hear that. But once again, it's June 8th yes. at the Marriott Key Center. That's yes. the Marriott Hotel, a big complex downtown yes. Cleveland. Yes, and, and they're, they're a great partner. Yeah. Um, and there are several cozy jumpstarts. So 
many mm -hmm. partners. Uh, yeah. uh, Marriott ha happens to be one, but there's tremendous partners that are are involved in this process. All, all of you, all of you are like the the fingers on a hand, all working together. Yes. To grab together. Yes. To be strong together. Yes. I, yes. I feel a speech coming yes. on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Oh, Rachel is uh, is the CEO of Synergy Marketing Strategy and Research. Rachel Talton, PhD. Good to have you on the broadcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And it's a pleasure well. to see you again. Oh, good to see you as always. Always good to see you. I'm going to take a break. In just a moment, we'll talk to the Urban League of Greater Cleveland's president, your friend and mine, Marsha Monkaby. After this. Comment and always with words of wisdom, your friend of mine, the CEO of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Marsha Maccabee. Hey, Marsha. Hey, Leon. How are you today? I'm okay. I was just thinking about it. you guys are over the Urban League. You're getting ready to celebrate if you've not already begun 90 some years mm -hmm. here in the Greater Cleveland, Greater Cleveland area. What yeah. goes through your mind as you think about the long history of the Urban League in Cleveland? You know, with this 95th anniversary, we're so excited. Um, it's a real milestone. Mm -hmm. And I think we think about how far we've come, um, despite the challenges, uh, really putting those things uh, behind us that are behind us and really looking forward and moving forward to the future. And one of the things that has really been on my mind lately is some of the very same issues that we were very passionate and focused on during the Civil Rights Movement are coming back to the fore now. Yes. The whole voter rights and uh, uh, voter suppression issues are probably one of the biggest assaults on voting rights that really impact upon civil rights that we've seen in a while. So. So, so there, there is still much for the Urban League to do. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. you're still looking for help for people, from people to, to join the Urban League. We and, certainly and are. And send contributions into the Urban League as members. Certainly the, are. The, in our uh, gala, black and white gala that we just recently had, as you know, we uh, actually honored a number of our platinum members uh, who were there celebrating with us that night. And that's the new membership level that we have now. Um, and, and folks who just really want to make sure that the Urban League's legacy continues are participating with us at that level, and we're very appreciative of that. So in our final 15 seconds, if they want to send a check to the Urban League, Absolutely. you'd be glad to accept that check. We certainly would. It would all be used for good purposes. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Many thanks. Marsha Mockaby of the Urban League, its CEO and its president. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you, Leon. Okay. That's mm -hmm. going to do it for both of us. I'm Leon Bibb. Good luck. Be well. We'll talk again. I'll see you on the 6 o'clock news. Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5.